Hi everyone, and welcome to this month's Art Historian. Did you know that today, January 29th, is National Puzzle Day? I didn't know there was a day dedicated to the celebration of puzzles until about a month ago, when I looked up a list of January holidays. Have you ever wondered who made the first puzzle? Or where the word puzzle originally came from? We'll be learning about that today, and I'll be showing you how to make a simple puzzle of your own from a piece of cardboard and any patterned paper that you have lying around the house. I'm using part of a Cheerios box for my backing, but you can use a thicker piece of cardboard if you like. Just keep in mind that if you use thicker cardboard, it will be more difficult to cut the pieces. I'm also using um, some of my painting matte medium as glue, but you can use any glue you have around. Elmer's glue, glue sticks, or Mod Podge will work just fine. I also have a brush and water, and this is a roller that I'm going to use to help press the paper flat on the cardboard. And I also have some paper towels to mop up any extra glue that gets splattered around. I'm going to use the wax paper later for when the puzzle is drying. And I also have a pair of scissors that I'm going to use to cut the pieces out. All right, let's get started. First of all, I'm going to apply my glue all over the cardboard very generously. If you're using a glue stick, make sure you get it in all the nooks and crannies to help your paper stick evenly. I'm now using my roller to help me roll out this layer as smoothly as possible. You can see that it's still wrinkled a little. Because the Cheerios logo would show through the wrapping paper if I just applied it straight away, I applied an in-between layer of printer paper. Now I'm applying my wrapping paper. Again, you don't have to use wrapping paper. You could print out an image from your computer, or you could use newsprint or anything else you wanted. So, let's get back to the history of puzzles. Puzzle is a strange sort of word if you think about it. The Oxford English Dictionary dates the word puzzle to the 1500s, with the first known use of the word coming from a book called The Voyage of Robert Dudley. Puzzle originally meant a confusing problem that needed to be solved, as in a problem that needed to be puzzled out. The first jigsaw puzzle was made around 1760 by a map maker named John Spilsbury, who lived in London, England. He mounted one of his maps on a thin piece of wood, then used a fine saw to cut the wood into complicated shapes along the edges of each country. These pieces could then be used to teach geography to children, who had to fit the countries into the right spaces in order to rebuild the map. These were called dissected maps, and became so popular that even the children of King George III, yes, that King George, the one you learned about in the history of the American Revolution, his children learned geography using one of these puzzles. Soon, people began making puzzles with other pictures, though they were still aimed at children and still made from wood. People thought cardboard puzzles, although they were cheaper, were of lower quality. During the late 1920s and 30s, jigsaw puzzles soared in popularity during the Great Depression. People didn't have much money to spend on games or toys, and puzzles were a cheap way of entertaining children and adults that could be used over and over again. Companies began using puzzles as a form of advertisement, with images of the products being made into puzzles. Imagine a puzzle advertising soap, for example, or your favorite soda. During 2020, since many people spent a part of their quarantine staying at home, puzzles surged in popularity again. A complicated puzzle can take hours to put together. My own family brought out puzzles and left them on the coffee table so that anyone who walked by could add a piece or two. It's easy to sit down with a puzzle for a few minutes and find yourself still there half an hour later, searching for just the right piece. 
Most jigsaw puzzles nowadays are made from cardboard. It's much easier and cheaper to cut cardboard than wood, although some companies do still make elaborate wooden puzzles. There are websites that allow you to pick an image and have a customized puzzle made with a family photo or with your own art. There are also plastic 3D puzzles in the shapes of hearts, stars, and any other shape you can imagine. Going back to the puzzle we're creating, you can see that I'm marking out the edges of the pieces on the back. I'm just sketching them in in different shapes. You can make these pieces as small and complicated or as large and simple as you like. I'm keeping mine fairly large because the smaller they are, the more difficult they will be to cut out. Once I have the pieces mapped out, I'm going to start cutting them. I'm using a fairly sharp pair of scissors, but if you have an X-Acto knife or a box cutter, you could try using that as well. Just be careful. The open blades make it very easy to cut yourself in the process. If you use thicker cardboard, again, the pieces will be more difficult to cut, but they will be a little more durable afterwards. These thin pieces, as you can see, get a little bent during the cutting process, and I have to flatten them out again. Thank you for watching this month's Art Historian, and I hope you have a wonderful time creating a puzzle of your own. Happy Puzzle Day!